Hey, good morning people. Another beautiful day in sunny Florida. And I figured I'd do a part two to the PPQ subcompact. Uh, the new PPQ subcompact that just came out. I, uh, I did a first video and I kind of bashed it a bit. So I figured I'd uh, give it another chance and talk to you about the positives and the negatives of the PPQ SC as I believe they're calling it now. All right, so first let's drop the mag. Gun is clear, nothing in the extended mag. All right, so let's go over a couple things here. All right, uh, it is ambidextrous. You have the left, left and right side slide lock slash slide release. Um, works really good on both sides. Let's see. Yep, both sides, it works pretty good. Now the trigger on this, I believe Walter has it as a 5.6 pound pull. Uh, I'll show you right now. You do have some pre-travel and it hits a distinct wall. And there it goes. Okay, so it is a, a very nice trigger. Pretty much like the uh, the normal size PPQ. All right, and I'll show you the reset. Get my finger back in there. There it is. Probably about a tenth of an inch. And then there it goes again. Okay. So in the first video, I talked about how the mag was catching on my hand on the extended mag. All right, so let's see, mag is in. You get the full size grip on it now. And I'll just show you that. This little piece here was catching on me when I was shooting it. All right, um, now I'm gonna tell you something I did. In just a second. There was a problem when ejecting them. It was catching on the meat of my hand. Okay, here's the small one. This one actually has a round, so I won't wrap it. Okay, and you can see right now it's coming out a lot easier. Okay, so what I had done is I changed the back strap. Let's drop that mag out. <clears throat> So this comes with two back straps. Uh, it comes with the small and the medium one on it, and then it comes with the large. And the way you take it out is you knock this roll pin out over here and pull off the back strap and put on the other back strap. Now on most guns, now I have probably medium size, not small, but medium size hands, not large. All right, um, now, <clears throat> Most guns, I usually take the small or medium sized back strap and use. The large one is usually too big for my hand. Now, just out of fluke, I said, you know what? Let me change out the back strap on this thing. And I discovered by doing that, it still fits pretty good in the hand, all right? Um, but it gave a little extra room for that magazine to drop. So for any people out there that have this, that bought it, and are noticing the same thing I was, that it was catching on my hand, um, anytime you want to release the mag, it would catch on you. Put the bigger back, back strap on it, and it'll probably solve that little problem that you're having. I don't even know if Walter knows that, so use the larger back strap, you'll be a lot happier with it. All right. um, I do know, though, that when you put in the 15 round mag with the sleeve that they have on here, I'm going to show you. See, it doesn't lock in until you push really hard to get it to lock in, then it's okay. All right, you gotta really make sure it's in there where the small one just slaps right in. But when you're doing it this way, see, like I have to slam it in there. And I'll try to hold it this way. See, like right now it's not in, it comes right out. You have to really push hard to get it in there to lock. It's one little quirk. Okay, takedown on this gun is fairly easy. All right. Um, I'm gonna just pull back on it a little bit. Pull down the little side straps. Let it go, pull the trigger. And should rack it back first. Pull down. And comes right off. You do have your dual recoil spring on there. And it helps out with the uh, muzzle flip and Standard PPQ barrel that's in it. I'm not going to take it all apart right now. Just wanted to show you that real quick. Now 
I did notice that you have to push down in order to get the slide back on. So when you're pushing in, you have to push down and push back, otherwise it hangs up. Okay, um, it does have a chamber indicator, so you can see if you have a round in the chamber. Okay, so there are some good things and some negative things about it. All right, um, great size. I mean, the only problem I have is this. Okay, <clears throat> why Walter can come out with a little finger extension and give it to you right off the bat, I have no clue. Now, when I originally purchased this gun, I was on the fence between this and a HK VP SK. And I was going back and forth. I have a VP9 already. And I was looking at the SK and I was about to get it. And then this came out. And then I went on their website and they show it with a finger extension on their website that they sell it, the magazine. All right? And they show the other magazines on their website. But lo and behold, typical of a lot of gun manufacturers, it's not available yet. Why do they do these things? You know, it just drives me crazy. All right, that is kind of like going to the car dealer, buying a car, and then after you purchase the car, the dealer turns around to you and says, oh, by the way, the spare tire uh, for this car is not available yet, but it's coming soon. You know, come on, you know, put it out at the same time you put the gun out. You know, how hard is it just to create the extra magazines for none of the mags? This isn't available yet. The... 10 round um, flush fit magazine is available. None is available yet. So how do you sell a gun and not have extra magazines? You know, there's a lot of people that like to carry a couple extra mags on them and you can't get them. You just can't buy them, you know, and they tell you don't use the full size PPQ mags with this because this has a <clears throat> faster recycling, faster cycling slide on it than the normal PPQ. So you'd have to change the spring in the normal size magazine in order for it to work correctly. So they don't have the spring kit available at the same time either. So that's a one big negative and a lot of these gun manufacturers do this and I really do not understand why. Put everything out so it's available and I guarantee you get a lot more sales out of it. You know, I've been doing retail for 20 years, 20 plus years. Have the product ready for the customer. You know, when you put something out there, put it all out there at the same time. Don't just go, oh, in the future, we're coming out with this. No, the future is now. Okay, put it out when you put the gun out. Very simple. You know, it, it pissed me off. I actually sent a nasty letter to Walter about it saying, why are you advertising it and it's not available yet? You know, you haven't made it yet. You know, and I got one response back from somebody saying, <clears throat> It's coming in the next two weeks. And actually the first response back, let me back up a little. First response was they had no clue what I was talking about. And then I sent it back to them and I said, here's the SKU number that you guys are advertising it. So how do you not know what I'm talking about? And then someone else emailed back and said, well, uh, it is coming within the next two or three weeks. Well, that was two weeks ago and it's still not on the site. You know, you can click on it and then as soon as you click on it, it takes you to another site and it's not available. It doesn't even show it to you. So Walter, get with the program, please. You know, I mean, that's the only negative I could see right now is coming out with a finger rest on you. And I was actually thinking of, of I've been looking to try to find an uh, extended base plate from somebody else, you know, from a, um, a knockoff or whoever, you know, some kind of aftermarket extended base plate that I could put on here that would work just to give me that extra spot for my finger. If they do that, that'd be fantastic. So if somebody wants to make a fortune out there, make that little base plate. All right, that's it. If you have any questions, comments, please leave it below. Thank you very much for watching the video. Hope you like it. Catch you next time.